Today we have five seasons to win the Champions League and the La Liga Santander with RCD Espanyol with the sole purpose of ruining Barcelona. Why are we trying to ruin Barcelona, I hear you ask? Well, let me tell you why. In 2017, Barcelona had one of the freakiest comebacks football has ever seen, beating PSG 6-1 in the second leg of the round of 16 in the Champions League. But PSG hold a grudge and they are currently in talks with RCD Espanyol to take over them with the sole purpose purpose of ruining Barcelona. They have specifically tasked us with taking one Barcelona star each season and to do so they've given us an extra 50 million to kickstart season one off. While somatic shout out to RatJFC for this idea, go follow his Twitter and YouTube channel for more career mode ideas just like this. So this is the default starting 11 for RCD Espanyol. There's a couple of players in there that realistically speaking are very goddamn good. They've got a lot of potential. The likes of Puedo, the likes of Suze, the likes of Kaidi Bear as well. But they've got Braithwaite in that start in 11, and that's when you know that you're scraping the barrel for talent. Jocelyn's still playing! But remember, guys, we've got to take one Barcelona player star every single season. And to do so, we have 61 million to work with in season one after the board have generously given us 50 extra million to work with after the takeover. Jesus, I like the look of this guy. 17-year-old Tony Torres, already 73 rated. You better believe he's going in the team. Before I started the transfer window, I took a good look at the team and realized that our weakness was our back four. So I went ahead and sold Andre. Here's Christensen away from Barcelona for 33 and a half million. Then I realised that both of our highest rated goalkeepers were on loan to us, so I went and brought Chelsea goalkeeper Kepa for 18 million. And with our newly promoted youth academy prospect Tony Torres into the team, I realised that there was only room for one winger on that left-hand side of the pitch. That's why I sent out Nico Malamed out on loan for a year. Leaving the team looking like this. Now, obviously, we're a long way away from even competing with Barcelona. I realised that. However, with the addition of Christensen and Kepa into the team, we're definitely on the right path to it. Plus, with the likes of Puedo, Tony Torres, Cardi Bear, Ped Rosa, there's a lot of young talent in this squad. But with our main priority of this rebuild ruining Barcelona, I couldn't resist the chance to play them in the very first season. Barcelona's team is undoubtedly better than ours, but I'm in charge of RCD Espanyol. That means that anything can happen. And in the 20th minute, this came out of nowhere. Go on, Susie. Go on, Su Oh, my God. Susie. 1 0 to Espanol from a strike from our CDM in Barcelona. Boys. <laughs> we're already above you. But after that goal went in, Barcelona were relentless, and our keeper and defensive lineup had the game of their lives. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, no. Not like this. Not like this. No. Cap. <laughs> and in the dying seconds of the game, this happened. Oh, my God. Barcelona in their own backyard and it looks like in our very first meeting in this rebuild we have the bragging rights boys we've done it we've beaten Barcelona 2-0 in their own backyard in our very first meeting. We have the bragging rights and surely to God it can just get better from here. But unfortunately it really hasn't because we come to the midway point in this season and we are ninth in the league. I'm aware that it's only halfway through the season and a lot can change between now and the end of the season. But right now after that performance against Barcelona you would think that the boys would just keep playing like that but it isn't the case. And this is a little update on how the team is looking going into the second half of this season. As you can see there's a bit of improvement amongst the side our youth academy player Torres 78 rated Jossalu you know what considering he's almost 33 years old 79 rated he did actually play well in that Barca match I was actually quite surprised 79 rated too in terms of growth this season is going spectacularly well and with us robbing a Barcelona player every single season who knows how good this team can be so we do come to the end of the season and we do finish seventh in the league it's not a bad start don't get me wrong, but Barcelona finished second and that's what we're aiming for. We are aiming to get above Barcelona and put them in the bin. And in the bottom three, it was RCD Mallorca, UD Almeria and Alche CF. With Atletico Madrid winning the Copa de España. Meanwhile, PSV went on to win the Conference League. Roma beat Arsenal to win the Europa League. And Liverpool beat Barcelona to win the Champions League. You see, considering we finished in the top eight, these stats are alarmingly bad. Let's just take a quick look. Yosselu, top goal scorer. 
12 goals, 4 assists, not bad at all. Puedo, 11 goals and 7 assists, going to 82 rating, not bad at all. Then you've got Martin Braithwaite, 9 goals, 1 assist, which, I mean, from the subs bench, I can imagine it being from the subs bench, it's not being too bad. Torres, on the other hand, fair enough, 80 rated, grown 7 overall this season. 8 goals and 5 assists is beyond poor. It is so bad, that is, for a winger. But we do have a total of 4 seasons left to win the La Liga and the Champions League to knock Barcelona off their pedestal. And this is how Season 2 squad currently looks now. Yoselu did decrease in overall at the end of last season. He went down to 78 rated from 80 rated. So I think it would probably be a good idea to sell him and get a replacement striker. But at the same time, we definitely do need to shore up this back line and I think after that we will look very good going into season two and the board have been very goddamn good to us this season giving us just over 50 million to work with and like I just said we definitely needed to bolster our defensive lineup a little bit more which is why I have stolen Eric Garcia away from Barcelona for 15.8 million we also went on to sell Josh Lou at 33 years old he was a tremendous servant to us last season but it was time to let him go for 10.4 million to Port and his replacement comes in the form of Yusef and Nesri for just over 35 million. Which leaves the team looking like this, and it is looking very, very goddamn good now. The back four is almost pretty much sorted now with the addition of Garcia. Christensen's just taken off in overall. Jesus, goddamn Christ. Our front three look good. The midfield trio, it definitely needs work. Kaidi Bear and Suze definitely need improving. However, it will do for this season. We have, including this season, Four more seasons to win the La Liga and the Champions League. Speaking of Europe, though, we are in the Conference League. We qualified last year. We are in Group F this time with Pauk FC, FCSB, and Dundee United. Now, looking at our team, how good it is right now, we should pretty much storm this group. We reached December and realised that we were eighth in the league, and that is absolutely shocking. Now, our next game just happened to be against Spanish giant Atletico Madrid, and trust me when I say this was going to be a very difficult game and we had an absolute nightmare of a start oh no that is outrageous from Felix oh wow oh damn okay this is gonna be a bit trickier than I thought oh no Oh, come on man we've got to be doing better than that with our first chance of the game we definitely made it count Oh, that's beautiful. Tony, come on. Make this one count. Make this one count! Oh, there we go, Tony. He makes that one count just on the stroke of half time. We get one back. The Youth Academy prospect coming in clutch. And giving into the second half, that goal actually gave us a little bit of hope. And then we conceded two and lost 4 1. Oh, come on, man. Well. It's safe to say that Atletico Madrid are definitely better than us at this moment in time. 4 1. How Felix just had his way with this. I can definitely see why we're not doing that well in the league now. Well, we're halfway through the season now and we are seventh in the league. And to be fair, when you actually take a look at the points tally, there's only 10 points between ourselves and first place Real Madrid. So you never know what could happen. But we absolutely smash it in the Conference League, winning five out of a possible six games, storming Group F. And just to update you guys, this is how the team is looking going into the second half of the season. Now, it's very clear to see where the weaknesses are. Our fullback Gill isn't exactly doing all that well and improving. We've got a CDM Suzy who's stopped growing entirely by the looks of it. Cardi Bear's doing pretty well, gone up to 80 rated this season. But it definitely is clear that our front three are carrying this freaking team at the minute. Boys, we've arrived at the end of the season and guess what? We have finished second in the league. We are two spots above Barcelona. We are getting closer and closer to achieving our objective of being better than Barcelona and ruining them. And in the bottom three, it was Garona Granada and SD Ponferradina. Real Madrid this time won the Copa de España. Besiktas went on to win the Conference League. Atalanta won the Europa League. Liverpool went on to win the Super Cup. And they also went on to win the Champions League. Stats-wise, boys, major, major improvement. With Puedo getting over 30 goal contributions this season. Torres getting over 25 goal contributions this season. Yusuf and Nesri getting 16 goals and one assist. I mean, I'm not exactly impressed by that. I was expecting him to get at least 20 goals but there's always next season for that he did go up to 86 rated which i'm delighted with so that is a plus but boys it's only season two and we finished higher than barcelona we have three
three seasons left to win the La Liga Santander and the Champions League, and I actually think we're going to do it. So in season three, this is how the starting 11 does currently look. Now, I want to make sure that this midfield is as good as possible going into this season, as well as this fullback position, Gil. He's 26 years old, granted, but I think it's time that we get a better fullback. And boys, the board are loving us at the minute. We've got 134 million to spend this season. I said I wanted to bolster the midfield, and that's exactly what I did by stealing away Frank Yannick Kessie from Barcelona for 60 and a half million. On top of that, I said I wanted a new fullback. That's why I brought in Polish right back Matty Cash for just over 28 million. Leaving the team looking like this. Now, obviously, Kaidi Bear is still the weak link in the team, but I'm hoping with the quality that surrounds him it won't matter all that much. We have gone from a 4-3-3 defensive variation to a 4-2-3-1 narrow with Dardor acting as a centre midfielder going up and down the pitch. But guys, I really like how this team is looking now. It looks phenomenal. And because we finished second last season in La Liga Santander, we are in the Champions League. We have gone from the Conference League to the Champions League in only one season. That's mad. We are in Group G joined by Chelsea, Porto and Celtic. Now, I'd actually guess that this group will end exactly exactly how it looks right now. With two games left in the group stage, we will level on points with Celtic. And to try and ensure a place in the round of 16 for us, I'm taking charge of the next game and we are playing against top of the group English Giants Chelsea. Anything less than a win in this game is basically taking us out of the Champions League and into the Europa League. So this is a humongous game. And in the opening minutes of the game, we ruin Chelsea's defence. Go on, go on, Tony. All you, all you. Oh, when we're taking the lead in the first five minutes of the game, courtesy of our youth academy prospect, Tony Torres. And to be honest, Chelsea's defence could not hack our front three. Oh, and Nesri, you serve, please. Make it 2 nil, and he has made it 2 nil. We're 2 nil up. Inside the first 22 minutes of this game, we're tearing Chelsea apart on the counter-attack. Oh my god, there's no way we're going to go 3 0 up, surely. Oh my god, we've gone 3 0 up. We are absolutely smashing Chelsea to pieces. And a very questionable decision from the referee led to this. Oh no. Get to. Oh, bloody hell. But then with five minutes to go, our Youth Academy prospect, Tony Torres, showed us why it was the right decision to call him up to the start in 11. Oh my god, Tony, he's done so well. Finish it off. 4-1. Oh my god. He picked it up pretty much in our half of the pitch. He's ran the entire length of the pitch. And he's put it away to make it 4-1 to RCD Espanyol. And we are cruising against top of the group table Chelsea. And there we have it, boys. We have beaten top of the group table Chelsea. Which has surely got to put us in a better position in the group table now. And hopefully in the La Liga Santander, we're doing just as well. So in the league at the halfway point we find ourselves once again seventh in the league but this time there's only nine points separating ourselves from first place Real Madrid so hopefully the gap won't be that big by the end of this season and in the Champions League that win against Chelsea seemed to do the trick because we did make it to the round of 16 alongside Chelsea and we are facing off against the Red Devils themselves Manchester United which is gonna be a very difficult game and we started that transfer window off by really rubbing salt into the wounds for Barcelona by bringing in one of their greatest players of all time, Lionel Messi, on a free. I then realised we needed a decent backup keeper, so I brought in 29-year-old Augustin Rossi for just over 16 million. And I also noticed that Braithwaite is retiring at the end of the season, leaving us without a half-decent striker on the subs bench, so that's why I brought in Mexican striker Raul Jimenez on a free. Which does leave the team looking like this. I still can't believe we got the GOAT himself, Lionel Messi, on a free, man. That is just criminal. Alongside Messi, Braithwaite is retiring, like I just said, at the end of the season, which is why we brought Raul Jimenez on a pre-contract agreement. He will be joining us at the end of this season, so hopefully next season he can do a pretty good job as a super sub. But right now, this team looks good, and we've got a date with United in the round of 16. And as you'd expect, Manchester United's team was absolutely scum, as they did end up taking a 2-1 lead into the second leg of this tie. So it was very simple. We either beat Manchester United and go through to the quarters, or we draw or lose and we exit the competition before it's even begun for us that's a ball that's a ball tony he's all on his own 
Come on, Tony Torres! He gets the opening goal in this game, making it 2 all on aggregate. We are well and truly in this round of 16 tie. And once again, Tony Torres was the man for the job. Oh my god, no way. Oh my god! Tony Torres is carrying us in this game. He is putting a Spaniel on his back and he is carrying us to the quarters. Remember that video when I said EA couldn't make a game? This is a prime example. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, but what? What was the keeper doing then? Kepi, what are you playing at? Well, thanks to a beautiful strike from Kessie, that cancelled their goal out. <laughs> Kessie. This game is just end to end. And I wasn't joking either. Both of us piled in the goals and by the end of the game we did end up winning 5-2 getting us into the quarterfinals. What a game boys. 5-2 at Old Trafford. We beat them 6-4 on aggregate and we progress to the quarter freaking finals of the Champions League. And in the quarters we meet up against another English giant. This time it's in the form of Liverpool and their team is just absolutely ridiculous. Let's be honest, this may be where we say goodbye to the Champions League competition. Let's see what we do. To be fair though, a 1-0 loss against Liverpool, we can definitely still come back from this. And whilst we put up a decent fight, we did get knocked out in the quarters by Liverpool, 3-1 overall on aggregate leaving us out of the competition and hopefully doing well in the La Liga Santander. Well we've come to the end of the season and Jesus Christ we fell off. We have finished sixth place this season. This is absolutely shocking. We finished second place last season and now we dropped down to sixth place. This is just nuts with arguably a better team as well. And in the bottom three it was Deportivo, Alaves, it was RCD Mallorca and Real Valladolid CF. Meanwhile Valencia won the Copa de España with Sevilla winning the Conference League, Inter winning the Europa League, Atalanta winning the Super Cup and Liverpool once again winning the Champions League. Stats wise again we've done pretty goddamn well. Tony Torres carried us this season. 29 goal contributions in 51 games, 85 rated at 20 years old, the boys just something else. Then you got Yusuf and Nesri gaining himself 26 goal contributions this season, doing far better than he did last season. Puedo fell off a bit, I have to admit, just over 20 goal contributions this season. But I have to admit, this season's a massive al, even though we got to the quarters of the Champions League. Finishing 6th place in La Liga is dreadful, meaning we won't even be in the Champions League, so everything literally comes down to Season 5. Now this is how we look going into Season 4. Now now, that team is definitely not worthy to win the La Liga yet, don't get me wrong, but it's definitely better than where we finished in Season 3. I'm finding it very difficult to see where we went wrong. Obviously, I think the suspension needs a little bit of work, but ultimately, that starting 11 is a lot better than where we finished last season. Fortunately, though, even though we had a shocker of a season last time out, we have got £158 million to spend this season. So in that transfer window, I took a look at what we needed, and what we needed was a sense attacking midfielder so I brought in Portuguese cam Bruno Fernandes for 51.6 million and the player we stole from Barcelona we brought in French centre-back Diot Upamecano for 73.3 million which does leave the team looking like this now there's only one weakness that I can see in that starting 11 and that is Pedrosa on the left back position but he's 82 rated that shows how good this team is when an 82 rated player is the weakest link we also do have Jimenez on the subs bench we've got Matt Alma, we've got Messi, Bear, Rossi, Gil, Garcia. Our bench is stacked. Our starting 11 is stacked. There is no reason why we can't win a trophy this season. And we are in Europe, but we've gone back to the Conference League after an absolute shit show of a performance last season. We're in Group A, joined by AZ, FK Austria, VN, and Derry City. And I'm not being funny. If we don't wipe the floor with this group, there's something seriously wrong with our team. To be honest, boys, if we'd have done anything less than 6 out of 6, I would have been freaking fuming with the squad that we've got. However, in La Liga Santander, we are currently in the top six. This is actually the best we've done so far in this freaking rebuild. And as you can see, there's only six points separating ourselves from first place Atletico Madrid. Obviously, fifth place isn't exactly good, but when you take a look at ourselves, Real Betis, Real Madrid's points tally, as well as Barcelona's, there's nothing in it. And just to give you guys a quick update, this is how the squad is looking going into the second half of the season, and I could not be happy with how this team is looking it is so good and i truly believe that this is the season we win a trophy but alongside ruining barcelona i had an objective of my own this season get revenge on atletico madrid and we had a chance to do so in the second half of the season and i wasn't about to waste it 
And we started this game off ridiculously strong with Tony Torres' long shot attempt rattling the crossbar. Tony with the shot. Oh! Go on! Oh! But with how we were dominating the game, it was only a matter of time before we found the back of the net. No. Oh, go on! Bruno! Bruno Fernandez in the 20th minute, and we get the first goal. Oh my god. Go on. Go on. Oh my god, we've got two goals in the space of five minutes. We are a different team from the last time we played against Atletico, and it's definitely showing. And early in the second half, we killed the game dead. No way. Three. <laughs> we are destroying Atletico Madrid. Well, there you have it, boys. Revenge is definitely sweet. Hopefully, we can just keep playing like this till the end of the season and get back in the Champions League. But that was definitely wishful thinking. Well, unfortunately, boys, we have failed to win the Champions League in this rebuild because we have not qualified for it for season five. We have finished yet again in a absolutely abysmal place in the La Liga sixth place and to be honest I don't know where I'm going wrong and what makes it worse Barcelona are top of the bloody table and in the bottom three it was Garona FC or Oviedo and UD Almeria we did make it to the final of the Copa de España unfortunately losing out to Villarreal 1-0 in the final Marseille went on to win the Conference League with Juve slapping Roma up in the final of the Europa League Inter won the Super Cup and Manchester City this time won the Champions League. I'm honestly lost for words at this moment in time because there's literally no weak areas in the starting 11. Maybe it's the substance that we need to work on in order to take the team to that next level. But as you can see from the stats, it's nothing to do with the strikers. They're doing their jobs. 20 odd goals for Nesri, 19 for Torres and Puedo, 13 13 for Bruno Fernandes. Our front four are doing very well indeed. Hopefully, season five is the season where we can actually win a trophy. So, this is our fifth and final season with Espanyol and as you can see majority of the players are on international duties but there's hardly any weaknesses we'll definitely get a new fullback for Pedrosa we're definitely going to get a better striker for the subs bench but I think primarily the subs bench is where our attention is most needed and once again we've been given just over 150 million to make this work we have to win La Liga this year otherwise this whole video is a bust I began this transfer winning by stealing one of Barcelona's best players in their squad Theo Hernandez one of the best fullbacks in the world at this point in the game and he cost me 113.4 million we then needed a striker for the subsequent so I brought in Gerard Moreno for 17.2 million not before bringing in Ilkay Gundogan and Sadio Mane both on a free which leaves the team looking like this the starting 11 stacked the subs bench stacked no weaknesses in the starting 11. Quality on the suspense to replace anybody in the starting 11. We are ready for season 5. And whilst it isn't the Champions League, it is the Europa League. And it's a trophy that we could potentially win with the squad that we've got. And we are in Group F with Lille, Dynamo Zagreb and Panathinaikos. And realistically speaking, we've got to wipe the floor with Group F. We're in the bin, boys. We are in the bin. How the hell did we not qualify for the round of 16 of the Europa League? You saw the team that we've got and we are not... Not beating the likes of Dynamo Zagreb and Lil to the round of 16 in the Europa League. This team is just shocking. However, in La Liga, it is neck and neck with ourselves and Barcelona. There's only three points in it. We are second, they're first. Hopefully, we end this season finally winning the league and topping Barcelona. And for the final time, this is how we've got the team lining up for the second half of this season. Now you can see my frustrations when we get knocked out of the Europa League because this team is a Champions League winning side and we didn't even make it out of the group stage of the Europa League. This game is on some other level of smoke, honestly. But we are in the Europa Conference League because we finished third in the group table, not bottom of it. And obviously, we are definitely in a title race with Barcelona themselves. 26 games in, it is ourselves and Barcelona, neck and neck, tied on points. And who just happened to be our next game? Barcelona themselves. This game could decide who wins La Liga Santander. Will it be Barcelona or will it finally be RCD Espanyol? Remember when I told you this game was broken, by the way? Watch this. But wait a minute. Have I just seen their keeper? Wait, who's that in goal? What is. Please, what is going on here, right? So I've just seen Barca's keeper run upfield. And a defender's taken his place in goal, and I don't know why. This game is broke. 
What is going... Boys, it's just after... What is going on? Why is the keeper keep coming out like that? It's 2-0 in 12 minutes. I'm not entirely sure what's going on. Why does he keep coming out like that? EA, fix your goddamn game. Fortunately enough, though, the game decided to fix itself. But late in the first half, we ended the game. First time shot, Yusef and Nezri! And it's 3-0 with Mendy in goal as well. So you can't even use that as an excuse. After that, we bagged a couple more goals. They got a consolation, but ultimately we won the game. And there we have it, boys. We've destroyed Barcelona 5-1 once again in their own backyard. And hopefully... We can make this the season we win La Liga. Okay, boys, we have arrived at the end of this season and the moment of truth is upon us. Have we won La Liga Santander finally? Yes! Finally! We won a bloody trophy. We finally toppled Barcelona. We took it to the very end, but we finally became better than Barca freaking Lona. It was by one point, don't get me wrong, but it still freaking counts. Jesus Christ, take a look at them stats. Torres has carried us this season. For the past couple of seasons, to be fair, he's carried us. Over 40 goal contributions. Bruno Fernandes as well. 45 goal contributions. And Nesri, 22 goals. Moreno off the subs bench as well. Dardar, 4 goals, 13 assists. Going down to 84 rated, but still... What a goddamn accomplishment that we've done today. That's where we're going to wrap this video up. If you have enjoyed, be sure to leave a like. Smash the hell out of that subscribe button. If you are new around here, turn that notification bell and so you never miss a video I upload. We're on the road right now to 7,000 subscribers. We want to hit it before the end of this year. And the like goal for today is 250 likes. That is all from me. It's been your boy, Gordon. Hope you guys have an amazing afternoon. And until next time, I'll see you later.